Jai Jai Sitcha Chanya Jai Anichananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Sitcha Chanya Jai Anichananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinna Jaya Jaya Sitcha Chanya Jaya Nichananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinna Jai Jai Sitchitanya Jai Anichananda Jai Jai Sitchitanya Jai Anichananda Jai Jai Sitchitanya Jai Anichananda Jai Jai Gaura Bhakta Vinna Jai Advaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinna So we'll begin to read from the 13th chapter of the Adi Lila from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita entitled The Advent of Lord Chaitanya and we'll start with uh, text number 80 Chodha Sat Chaya Shakya Shesha Magya Mashe Jagannath Suchir Dehe Krishnira Praveshe In the month of January, in the year 1406 of the Sakya era, Lord Krishna entered the bodies of both Jagannath Misra and, and Sachi. Purport. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took his birth in the year 1407, Sakya era, in the month of Falguna. But he received that he entered the bodies of his parents in the year 1406, in the month of Magh. Therefore, the Lord entered the bodies of his parents 13 full months before his birth. Generally, a common child remains within the womb uh, of his mother for 10 months, but here we see that the Lord remained within the body of his mother for 13 months. Misra kahe suchit stane dikki anarita jyotir maya deha geha lakshmi adhistita Jagannath Misra said to Sachi Mata, I see wonderful things. Your body is effulgent and it appears as if the goddess of fortune were now staying personally in my home. Jahataha sarvaloka Kareya Shamana Garapataya Deya Danavastradana Anywhere and everywhere I go, all people offer me respect, even without me asking. They voluntarily give me riches, clothing and petty. Sachi Kahe Munidekun Akashupare Divya Murti Lokashabe Yenashtutikara Sachi Mata told her husband, I also see wonderfully brilliant human beings appearing in outer space as if offering prayers. Jaganad Misra Kahe, Shapna Yedekila, Jyotir Maya Dame Mure, Ridaya Pashila. Jaganad Misra then replied, In a dream, I saw the effulgent abode of the Lord enter my heart. Amaridai Haitagila, from my heart, it entered your heart. I therefore understand that a great personality will soon take his birth. Um, in, the, in the tenth canto of, uh, of Srimad Bhagavatam, we find a description that when Krishna appears, it's in a similar way from the pure consciousness of Vasudev. Uh, from the pure consciousness of Vasudev, it was uh, Krishna entered into his consciousness and then from 
the heart of Vasudev was transferred to the heart of Sachimata, or to uh, to uh, Devaki, and then there was pregnancy. So it is said this is the process of transmission of transcendental knowledge, or also known as the process of diksha. So through this process, actually, Krishna was received by Devaki, and now we see the same. We see a parallel here, we see the same. In the same way the Lord was conceived in the womb of Sachimata. Um, um, so the pregnancy approach is 13 months, but still there was no sign of the delivery of the child. Thus Jagannath Misra became greatly apprehensive. Nilambar Chakravarti, the grandfather of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then did an astrological calculation set in, in that in that month, taking advantage of an auspicious moment, the child would take birth. Um, uh, and then a number of verses are describing uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's um, moment of appearance. And we know that he appeared on the, uh, on the Purnima. Uh, it's like in the month of Falguna, on the evening of the full moon, the Lord appeared. Um, and it says, when the spotless moon of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became visible, what would be the need for a moon full of black marks on its body? Considering this, Rahu, the black planet, covered the full moon and immediately vibrations of Krishna, Krishna, Hari inundated the three worlds. Oh. So it was uh, an eclipse, a grahan, the time that Rahu covers either the sun or moon. And as was the customary practice, all the local people would go to the holy river, the Ganges, and enter into the water waist deep and spend all their time during the eclipse in the Ganga chanting the holy name of the Lord. So everywhere, in all directions, the chanting of the holy name could be heard. And although, generally speaking, a grahan or an eclipse is considered to be inauspicious, and generally speaking, people will not go out of the house. At that time, everyone stays inside. Those who are very strict are covering all the supplies of grains and so on with kusa grass to counteract the inauspiciousness of the grahan. No cooking going on. And at that time, uh, everyone is just chanting the name of the Lord to counteract inauspiciousness because after all, it is the influence of Rahu, who's like a demoniac planet that causes this eclipse. But at the time, when the eclipse was going on, at the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it was not at all uh, an, an inauspicious atmosphere, rather the opposite. The atmosphere became surcharged with auspiciousness. Everyone felt, felt very peaceful and jubilant. Um, Advaita Acharya and Haridas Thakur, they began to dance. Uh, they, they had both caused the appearance of the Lord. Uh, Haridas, by his chanting and his prayer for the Lord to appear. And Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya had read in scripture that if one offers me simply some, some water and a leaf, then I have nothing in my possession to offer in return, and therefore I will offer myself. So when Advaita Acharya read that, he thought, oh, this is it. This is the way that I will force the Lord to appear. And he began his worship of Shalagram Shila with some Ganga Jal and Tulasi leaves. And yes, uh, what kind of reward could Krishna give for such worship? Oh. 
No, no ordinary exchange could be given. Therefore, all he could do was give himself. And the Lord appeared in this world. Um, it is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita earlier on that Lord Krishna had been thinking to himself. Lord Krishna had been thinking for long, I have not appeared in this world and have given love of myself. If my name is truly Viswambar, uh, the maintainer of the entire universe, then how can I be called maintainer if I am not giving the residents of the universe love of God? Because to just feed someone and, and give clothing, that's not maintaining. That's not maintaining. You have to give them full happiness only then are you maintaining. And where is the question of full happiness unless love of God is given? Therefore, Vishwambar is the one who gives love of God, the maintainer of the entire universe. This was the name that was given to the child by Nilambar Chakravarti, who was the grandfather who had done the astrological calculations. Um, and uh, you see what was going on. There were all these auspicious signs. Sachi Devi, she saw these celestial beings in the sky. And after the child appeared, it also continued with all kinds of uh, extraordinary things. So many visitors came to see the child. Even the wives of the demigods. Um, even the demigods themselves, they were disguising themselves as ordinary brahmanas and came to visit the house uh, in this way. So many came to see the child. Um, and it is said that then when the child um, had taken birth, he was given various names, uh, Sita Thakurani, who was very senior, the wife of Advaita Charya. She gave the child the name Nimai because he was born under a Neem tree and at the same time that would protect him. Uh, that name Neem protects. It is a tree that protects from uh, ghosts and other negative influences. So they gave the child that name Nimai for his protection. Uh, so in that way he had his childhood name and his more formal name, Vishwamba, given by his grandfather. Mm. Lord Chaitanya, uh, indeed, came for that purpose, um, to deliver the entire universe and drown the entire universe in, in love of God. It is said that along with the Lord, uh, came also his associates, Krishna Varnam, Twisa Krishnam, Sangha Bhagasta Parasadam. Uh, Sangha Bhagasta Parasadam. Along with him came various weapons, his associates came, uh, uh, the holy name came, uh, and of course Krishna Prasadam came, and in this way uh, the Lord's transcendental influence was was felt. Um, many great devotees appeared before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Murari Gupta in his diary is describing how the elders came. Uh, Advaita Acharya came from Silet in East Bengal and settled in Navadvip. Um, the Brahmana Upenda Misra, who was also from the Silet area, he had ten sons, and one of them was Jagannath Misra. And Jagannath Misra also settled in Navadvip on the bank of the Ganges. Uh, the same Srivas Thakur, who also came from East Bengal, he also settled uh, in Navadvip and became a neighbor of Jagannath Misra. And Srivas and his wife Malini were very close very close to Jagannath Misra and Sachi Mata. 
it is said that they were very much present. Um, even, uh, even Malini was assisting uh, at the time of the appearance of the Lord. She was assisting Sachi Mata uh, with, in taking care of her newborn child. So they were there from the beginning and others. Uh, others were there also. So Lord Chaitanya comes to this world alone with his many devotees uh, because Krishna is never alone. And he came particularly to inaugurate the Sankirtan movement. Uh, and that Sankirtan movement, particularly Yayanti Sumedha Saha, for the in intelligent class of men, right, actually, for those who somehow or other had some intelligence left, although in the age of Kali, uh, Kalavisme Yuge Janaha, the people of the age of Kali are Manda Sumanda Matiyo, Manda Bhagya Upadruta. They are uh, not fortunate, impious, less intelligent, and so on. But somehow or other, uh, Lord Chaitanya's mercy is available. And those who are, have some intelligence, take it. Those who have no intelligence, what, they may not not take to this movement. Huh? They may not take. Hmm. In one verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is saying that by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, one can cross over an ocean which is filled, it, it's like a child that is swimming across an ocean that is filled with the crocodiles of various speculative theories. Now imagine an ocean full of crocodiles. And then imagine a child who is like, you know, a swimmer, but still not as strong as an Olympic swimmer yet, right? Maybe a good swimmer, but how good? An ocean is very big. Uh, how far can we swim uh, in the ocean? And then even if you can swim, there are the crocodiles. They'll eat you for sure. It said, the crocodiles of various speculative theories. So we are surrounded by such crocodiles. So many theories, so many ideas that are totally wrong, but that are presented to us as the truth. And this is the only way uh, uh, we can think of philosophers from East and West. Uh, we can think of uh, Darwin, we can think of Freud, and we can think of the architects of modern life who have basically given us a false idea of the self. Uh, um, we can think of philosophies such as Karma Mimamsa, uh, philosophies where it is thought that everything in this universe is controlled by karma, or we can look at various materialistic philosophies. And all these ideas are just crocodiles. Uh, Buddhism, yes, another form of atheism. Uh, all philosophy, karma kanda, right? performing this ritual and that ritual to get material benefit. But what is the benefit of material benefit? What is the benefit when it's temporary? What's the point? So you get some temporary gain. Uh, we saw a certain Baba who has passed on, who declared himself an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. You know. And this Baba was... I saw a video clip where he was seated uh, in, a, in a hot room in South India, big hall, many people. And so someone brought him a towel and he rubbed his face with the towel and the next moment he started to make like a con convulsion movements. <laughs> and next moment he 
he coughed up a golden egg. And everyone went like, whoa. Now, you know, I think I could do that too if I, if I could afford a, full, a golden egg. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if someone would hide it in the towel, I think I could manage to sort of slip it in my mouth and then bring it out. Uh, but people are so, were so impressed. The video shows people, oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, cheap, cheap magic. You know? I've seen better tricks in the circus. <laughs> to, uh, what, to, what to do? So, such is this, the situation. Uh, these are all the crocodiles, the crocodiles. Uh, or so many things are being sold to us. You must have these things for your happiness. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, and we are buying. We are buying. So what to do? Mm -hmm. Here we are, Prabhupada was speaking about modern man and his machines. And he told the story of a fisherman who was having his, his basket in which he would carry the fish to the market. So since the fisherman used to sleep on the beach, he was used to uh, use the basket as a pillow because otherwise at night they steal your basket. So one time he went to visit his relative and he took his basket with him. And then at night he wanted to take his basket inside the house as a pillow because he was used to sleep like that and uh, with that fishy smell. And the relatives, they wouldn't allow it because the whole house started to smell like fish. And so he couldn't sleep that night. And Prabhupada said, modern man is just like that. He always has to have a machine for anything. Right? All the time, when I want to go somewhere, even 100 meters, the devotees say, we'll bring a car. And I said, can walk. No, no, we bring a car. I said, no, no, I can walk. <laughs> I can walk. Walking is good. Yes. So we are so dependent in this age of Kali on so many artificial things that we think are necessary. And the result is that there is no time, no time, no time for anything, especially no time for chanting. No time for chanting. Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to inaugurate the Sankirtan movement, Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's aim was clearly stated in the Sikhasthikam, Tinada pi suni chena, Tarora pi sahisuna, Manina manadena, Kirtanya sadahari, that we were meant to come to the point of, of just relying on chanting. But we rely on so many other things, and all these other things devour our, our time. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, from his early childhood, uh, there, were, uh, there were miracles uh, surrounding uh, the child. Uh, and uh, that must be so. Uh, because when the Supreme Lord appears, uh, you'd expect some miracles. Uh, yes. Uh, once the child was stolen by some decoits, they kidnapped him. Uh, but then the child somehow or other bewildered the mind of these decoits. And as they were running away, they ran in a circle. And they exactly wound up in front of the house of Jagannath Mishra. And everyone came running out of the house. Oh, Nimai was lost. Nimai was lost. And these nice men have brought him back. <laughs> and I said, oh, thank you so much. And they took the child. And then these dacoids ran away, uh, afraid to get caught. So Nimai controlled the entire situation. Um, there is that well-known story of a Brahmana. Of a Brahmana who came to the house of Jagannath Misra and stayed there. 
And Jagannath Mishra was so pleased. A Brahmana has graced my house, a saintly person. Oh yes, and you please, worshipping the Shaligram Shila. So please, we'll provide the ingredients so that you can make an offering to your to the Lord Shaligram. So the Brahmana prepared the offering and cooked everything. And everything was ready. Spoke the mantras for the offering and suddenly there was Nimai. And Nimai put his hand right in the offering plate and ate it. And the Brahmana, ah! <laughs> this child has spoiled the entire offering. Oh, Jagannath Mishra came, ah! Oh, such a misfortune in my house. What can be done? Please forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. He's only a child. He doesn't know the, what he is doing. Uh, you please forgive him. We, please, please, please cook again. Oh, the Brahmana then cooked again. Meanwhile, Chakanat Mishra chastised Nima. You rascal, how could you do such a thing? You know very well that this is not allowed. Then again, the Brahmana had cooked again, made again an offering, and spoke the mantras, and again, Nimai was there. Whoop! Chook the boga. Mmm! Tasty. Ah! Again, the whole drama repeated itself, and this time, Jagannath Mishra was even more upset. Uh, the Brahmana said, I think I meant to fast today. The Lord doesn't want to accept any offering. But somehow or other, Jagannath Mishra became so upset that to pacify him, the Brahmana had to cook again. And he did, and he cooked. And the last offering was, it was almost midnight when it was ready. And again, the Brahmana spoke the mantras. And again, Nimai appeared. And the Brahmana said, no. And then Nimai said, what can I do? You're calling me with this mantra. <laughs> I have to come. So he came, and in this way, and then revealed his transcendental identity to the Brahmana, that he was the Supreme Lord, but told him not to disclose it. Huh? Because in his early childhood, Lord Chaitanya remained hidden. He did not re reveal his transcendental identity. Although there were miracles surrounding the child, clearly indicating that he was not an ordinary person, still, somehow or other, no one realized who he was. Uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat describes how Nimai grew up and in Navadvip, a place of such learning of many aristocratic brahmanas who would daily stand in the Ganga chanting the Gayatri mantras while remembering their gotra, their exalted gotras. And just then, uh, Nimai would swim underwater and would pull their legs and they would fall over in the middle of chanting Gayatri. <laughs> so they became very upset, very upset. They complained to Jagannath Misra, this boy is extremely mischievous, extremely. The way he behaves, it's just too much. Sometimes Nimai would sit on the bank of the Ganga. And when the Brahmanas came out of the water, it turned out that Nimai had his mouth filled with Ganga water and he would spit on the Brahmanas. <laughs> spit! The Supreme Personality of Godhead, in his causeless mercy, was spitting on these Brahmanas. <laughs> but little could they understand what mercy they received. Instead, they became extremely disturbed and upset and complained to Jagannath Mishra. But then Nimai came home and his father chastised him. And Nimai said, no, this is all not true. I didn't go to the Ganga today. And his hair was dry and there was dust on his body and still some ink spots from school. And all Nimai's friends said, very smart, Nimai. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this way, the Lord was performing his childhood pastimes and no one knew, no one knew that he was the Supreme Lord. No one had any idea. Um, 
Although sometimes there were extraordinary signs. Nimai, at one point, uh, Nimai's father disappeared. He, he became ill and, and, and shortly after that left the world. So there the mother was alone with a young boy and it was a major problem. How was she gonna, going to maintain him? And then he was extremely demanding. So one day he says, I want to worship the Ganga. His mother said, yes, yes, my dear son, just a moment. I will bring the garland and all the paraphernalia for you. Right? And he says, no, no, I don't want to wait. I want it now. Oh, and he went into a fit of rage. He grabbed a stick and he started to break everything in the whole house. He smashed everything, went into to the kitchen, smashed all the supplies, threw everything over, all over the floor, spoiled everything, hit the walls of the, of the house, finally was lying on the ground, beating the ground with his fists. Mother Sachi, didn't say a word, nothing. She tolerated it all. Then somehow or other, how she did it, nobody knows, but somehow or other, she still managed to cook lunch. Then when she served it out, she said, so, Nimai, I don't know why you did all this, but I can tell you one thing, this is the last meal that I'm serving. <laughs> because there are no more supplies. You destroyed everything. So, you know, he heavy weapons she was applying to chastise him. But next moment, Nimai manifested a tola of gold. A tola is about the size of a thumb. Right? Just out of nowhere, a tola of gold and gave to his mother and said, get some supplies. <laughs> and she was thinking, where does he get this gold? How does he get it? When we run out of money, he just manifests some gold and it all just goes on. So miracles were there throughout the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even before. Then, at one point, Nimai started to get this disease that he fell on the ground and it looked, some thought he was like having epileptic fits. He was just fainting and falling on the ground. Uh, but when Srivas Thakur came to see, Srivas said, Oh, I would like to have this disease. Uh, this disease of love of God. So some understood at an early age, uh, but most didn't know. He remained covered, uh, the Chana avatar, the hidden incarnation. Uh, at the same time, he was a great scholar in logic and yaya, and he would uh, defeat everyone, and he would then present arguments no one could defeat, and then defeat those arguments himself, right? And then, he would defeat those arguments also until everyone's head was spinning. <laughs> and, you know, and Morari Gupta was learned and would daily come to argue with him and daily Nimai would defeat him and said, go back, go back to your studies, Morari. <laughs> <laughs> so he was proud, he was arrogant, walking around, aristocratic, and with his Brahmin thread on his, tr on his chest uh, and Ananta says had personally entered into this Brahmin thread. Mm. Um, it was later only uh, that the Lord began to reveal his identity to his devotees uh, in his latter years of his stay in Navadvip. Uh, for a number of years he, he revealed himself to, to the devotees as that transcendental personality. After he had gone to Gaya to perform the Shraddha ceremony for his father, uh, and when he returned, he had been initiated by Iswara Puri. And after that, he began to show openly ecstatic symptoms of love of God, devotion, and suddenly it was, 
suddenly he was the greatest of all the devotees and and, and gradually they realized it. Uh, he is not ordinary. And Advaita Acharya realized it first. He is. He is the personality we've been waiting for. He is the Supreme Lord. And he captured him one day while he visited his house and said, Now you will not cheat me anymore. Now I know who you are. And he began to offer worship. Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmana Hitayata Jagati Taya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo Namaha. So, with this mantra, which glorifies Krishna, uh, which glorifies Krishna, the cows, and the Brahmanas, Govinda, he was, he was repeating it again and again and establishing that yes, he is Govinda. And later, Lord Chaitanya performed that Mahaprakash Lila where he sat on the house in, on the altar of Srivas and he showed everyone, uh, everyone that he was the Supreme Lord uh, by telling something extraordinary that nobody knew, uh, that nobody could have known. For example, there was one devotee, he had a, a beautiful wife and an even more beautiful young daughter. So one evening they were traveling and it was getting a bit late and they were being followed by some Muslim man. So he is getting an anxiety, well, what's going to happen? So he's moving very fast, very fast, trying to stay ahead of these men. And then they came to, to the bank of a river. He said, what do we do now? What do we do now? And, and he prayed, oh, oh Lord, oh, oh Lord, please save me, please, please. Just then, a boatman appeared out of nowhere and took them across the river, and they escaped. <sighs> so, during the Mahapakash Lila, all the devotees had worshipped Lord Chaitanya. Then Lord Chaitanya said to this devotee, remember that night? Oh yes, I remember. Remember how you were in great anxiety? Remember how you stood on the bank of the river and prayed? Oh yes, I remember. I remember that feeling of despair. You remember how a boatman came out of nowhere? I said, yes, that was a miracle. Lord Chaitanya said, that boatman was I. Oh my God, it made complete sense. How could it have been anyone else? It made sense. Only the Supreme Lord. Huh? Like this, there were so many so many things where the Lord indicated that he really was the Supreme Lord. The devotees were convinced. Others still didn't know. Huh? Greg, Lord Chaitanya, the Chana avatar, the hidden avatar, huh, was hidden because he appeared in the form of a devotee. Panchatatvamakam krishnam bhakta rupa sarupakam bhakta avadaram bhakta kyam namami bhakta shakti kyam. Uh, this verse is describing how the Lord appears in five features and how he appears in the form of a devotee, Bhakta Rupa, then Bhakta Swarupa. Just the same, the same Lord, but in a different mood. Uh, the same Lord not appearing as the Lord who is master, but as the Lord who is servant, Sevak Bhagavan. It said Lord Chaitanya is Sevya Bhagavan, the Lord who is served, and Lord Nichananda is Sevak Bhagavan, uh, the Lord who is serving. So that's the only difference, otherwise they are the same. Then Bhakta Avatar, Advaita Charya, the incarnation of the Lord, uh, Bhakti Shakti, the energy of the Lord, Gadadhar Pandit, and finally, uh, the devotee, Srivas Thakur, representing all the devotees. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya appeared in five features. Uh, this verse, Panchatattvamakam Krishnam, is, is immediately stated after the invocation, after the Mangala Charan in the Adi Lila of Chaitanya Charitamrita. We find that this same verse is mentioned in the Gora Ganadesh Deepika of Kavi Karnapur, the son of Sivananda Sain, who as a baby sucked 
the toe of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and therefore became an extraordinary devotee. Wrote this amazing book, Gorakhanadesh Deepika. Uh, and it is very interesting. In the Gorakhanadesh Deepika, this verse, Panchatattvamakam, is found. And Kavi Karnapur, his book was finished according to the Kolophon in 1576, he writes, that completed in 1576. Whereas the Chaitanya Charitamrita is dated some 40 years later. Uh, so this verse comes much earlier, 40 years earlier than in Chaitanya Charitamrita in this Gauraganadesh Deepika. And there, Kavi Karnapur is identifying the verse as coming from the Kadacha of Swarup Damodar Goswami. So when it comes to the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami mentions that there are two main sources, two main sources of information. One source is the diary of Murari Gupta, which describes all the early pastimes of Navadvip, basically. And it says, and everyone has followed that. Vrindavan Das Thakur has elaborated on these pastimes and so on. All the biographers followed Murari Gupta's diary. And then the later pastimes, they were recorded in the diary of Sarup Damodar Goswami. But, oh, and Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami also said, that is the main basis of, of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, this diary of Sarup Damodar Goswami. But now what happened? The diary of Swarup Damodar Goswami is lost. Is lost. Just see. It is lost. But somehow or other, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami stayed in Jagannath Puri in the final days of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes on earth, along with Swarup Damodar Goswami as the assistant of Swarup Damodar Goswami. And Ramananda Roy was there. And Raghunath Das, somehow or other, Srila Bhakti even Thakur mentions in the introduction to his Brahma Samhita commentary, he mentions that Raghunath Das memorized, memorized the entire Kadacha, the entire diary of Swarup Damodar. So, and... Raghunath Das, when he came close to Vrindavan, uh, then when he came to Vrindavan, then Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami became very close to him. Srila Prabhupada identifies him as the Siksha Guru of uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Others think that he was the Diksha Guru even of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. But Srila Prabhupada stated that Nichananda was the Diksha Guru of Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Hmm. And that is also confirmed on an inscription in Jamatpur, which is the, there is a little shrine where the birthplace of Krishna Das Kaviraj is. And there, uh, there's a stone with an inscription which says that Krishna Das Kaviraj was the disciple of Lord Nichananda. So, that's interesting. Anyway, so this verse, Panchatattvamakam Krishnam, this verse is very important to us. It is a very central verse, actually, in our entire movement. Because this is the verse that identifies the Panchatattva. Nowhere else, in Murari Gupta's diary, you find no mention of Panchatattva. You find all the personalities, Advaita Acharya, Nityananda extensively, Gadadhar Pandit, Srivastakur, they're all there, but they're never considered to be one unit. Never. That only comes first in that verse, Panchatattvamakam Krishnam. The concept of the Lord appearing in five features. And then in the Gauraganadesh Deepika, there are a number of verses that explain it. And it said previously, Krishna appeared also in these five features. And now the Lord has again appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in these five features. 
And that is interesting. Uh, that Krishna previously appeared in the same five features because Krishna, after all, is, is also appearing in his original form, uh, in his, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam. And Lord Balaram uh, is his immediate expansion, his Vaibhav Vilas expansion. He is the very same, the very same Krishna, but now appeared in a, in a whitish form, right? a different mood, the mood of his servitor, but yet the same Krishna. And then so many avatars also, so many avatars appeared. And so, and then we see uh, also Shakti Tattva uh, appears. Radharani, Adini Shakti, so many gopis, also part of this Shakti Tattva. And finally, also Jiva Tattva devotees. So these same five features, the same Pancha Tattvas appear with Krishna. And now again, now again with... Uh, with Lord Chaitanya, Advaita Acharya, none other than Mahavishnu, right? who is the avatar, right? who is the avatar of Krishna, the expansion of Krishna. So, in this way, uh, in this way, we can understand the position of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is Krishna, Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajame. It actually was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is said, did not write any books. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, only gave us the six astakam, right? these, these eight prayers. Right? So he didn't leave much. Right? So sometimes it is said that actually the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu developed the theology. They actually, they say, they develop the teachings, Rupa Goswami and Jiva Goswami. But we see that that's not a fact. That's not a fact. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although he did not write, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in South India, he came to the Adi Keshav temple. And when he came to the Adi Keshav temple, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that temple discovered two manuscripts. Uh, one was Krishna Karnam Rita of Bilva Mangala Thakur describing Krishna's Vrindavan uh, pastimes. And the other was the Brahma Samhita, the fifth chapter of the Brahma Samhita. And when uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu found this manuscript, he danced, he danced around that temple in ecstasy in ecstasy. And he, so he highly endorsed it. So therefore, we can see that the, uh, the Brahma Samhita uh, very much is representing the theology of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it's the very same, the same theology of the Srimad Bhagavatam, but summarized. And it clearly establishes Krishna is uh, Isvara Parama Krishna Satsidananda Vigraha Anadira Dir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam Establishing Krishna as the original cause of all causes. Uh, it establishes that all the incarnations are coming from Krishna. Dipachirevi Dasantriya Mabu Pecha Dipayate Vritahinu Samana Dharma Yastadrikevi Hitavishnu Tayor Vibhati Govindamadi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Just as from one original candle, so many others can be lit in the same way from Krishna. So many incarnations are, are manifesting. Why? Huh? Why? We can understand all this because we understand from the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that Krishna is absorbed in his own pleasure pastimes in the spiritual world. Uh, why would Krishna, uh, why would he work? Natasya karyam karanam savijyate. The Lord doesn't have to work. You think that the Lord is sitting behind a big computer 
and, and just sort of control R to make it rain? <laughs> you know? Huh? And it has to work overtime? No, not like that. You know? It all goes on by his will, automatic. He doesn't work. He doesn't need to work. And in fact, he doesn't interfere with the material energy that he does through his expansions. It is Mahavishnu who mixes with the material energy. He, Saik Sata, huh? it is mentioned in the Upanishad that the Lord is glancing upon the material energy. Saik Sata, and he is glancing upon the material energy, upon Pradhana. Huh? Pradhana, the unmanifest potential of the material energy, which then becomes activated by that glance. Huh? It is said, in an inactive state, the three modes of material nature are in equilibrium and therefore not manifest. And Pradhana, the, the material energy is not manifest. Then, when the Lord glances upon that Pradhana, it becomes activated. The Lord's glance becomes Sada Shiva, who is directly expanding then from Mahavishnu, and still is Narayan. And Jiva Goswami explained, well, in the Brahma Samhita is also explained, Yada Dadi, Yata Dadi Vikara Visesa Yoga, then there's a transformation of Sada Shiva, who becomes Shiva, the demigod Shiva. All this is explained in the Sandarbhas and also in the uh, uh, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita by Sanatan Goswami and Jiva Goswamis. So, like that, we are seeing um, how uh, it is Mahavishnu who deals with the material energy, not Krishna. Krishna is absorbed in his transcendental pleasure pastimes, and even when Krishna, Krishna is not bothering with the creation, uh, that he leaves up to his expansions. When Krishna comes to this world, he comes to perform transcendental pastimes for his own pleasure. Kill a few demons and so on and, you know, lift a, lift a hill here and there and some of these things. Yeah. Show a universal form. Have some fun. Uh, that is Krishna, always engaged in his own pleasure pastimes. Now, Lord Chaitanya, the same, the same, absorbed in his own internal ecstasy and yet at the same time distributing the mercy. Therefore, there is an internal reason for the appearance of the Lord and an external reason for the appearance of the Lord. And both are equally important to the Lord. His own purpose to taste that, uh, that, that love of God that Sri Radharani displayed. And at the same time, the purpose of delivering all the conditioned souls. For that reason, the Lord appears. Uh, for these two reasons, the internal, the external reasons. Uh, first of all, for us, the external reason is the most important uh, because that's his mercy feature and we need it every step of the way. Without mercy, <laughs> we can't do it. Uh, uh, just like... Uh, I used to, tr nowadays in India, everybody, well, a lot of people fly. Yeah, now so many planes are there, but before, no planes, only trains. So on the trains, there were long conversations, right? Long, people would tell their whole life story on the train, and it's like, you know, everything. Oh. And it's like big exchanges on the train. And inevitably, when they would see us, Everyone would quote some slokas from the Gita. Paritranaya sadhunam vinasya saduskridam. Then uh, that was always quoted. Or sarva dharmam parichaya mamikam saranam vraja aham tam sarvupabhebhya. Abandon all variety of activity, just surrender unto me. And then they say, you know, how, Swamiji, how can you do it? How can you follow these things? Huh? We cannot follow these things, people used to say. How can you follow it? We cannot follow it. That is a fact. Who can follow it? That was the problem. When Krishna came and gave 
the Bhagavad Gita. Very few followed it. Who could follow it? Everyone said, oh, this is too difficult. I cannot, oh no, I cannot do this. Oh no. Oh. But now, with the added mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, suddenly, now it becomes possible. See? Now, even the foreigners are following it. <laughs> now, all over the world, people are following it. How is it possible? How is this possible? By the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is magic. This is magic. But is it, is it just happening by magic? No. No. It is very practical. It happens by the chanting of Hare Krishna. If simply we chant this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra again and again, uh, again and again, that will give us strength. Then suddenly the impossible becomes possible. Then suddenly it can be done. Then we can follow the Gita. Then yes, yes, yes. Then we can give up these material things. Then higher taste will come. It will come. Uh, we lose the taste for mundane things. Uh, instead of going to the, uh, the Grand Prix, right? We have Gorponim. <laughs> it's, it's, it's better. It's much better. So aggressive. And, and then every day that plane comes. And that's inconceivable. A, a jet, you know, I mean, I, I thought about shooting it down. I thought about several things, serious. And this is too much. One demon in the sky, right? I was thinking, just, just one demon in the sky and the whole city, you know, the whole city is just shaking. That's really what's going on. One demon in the sky. There's no doubt about that, who he was up there, a demon in the sky. That's clear. And these cars also sound so demoniac, aggressive. God, as soon as it's light, even, even higher. <laughs> yeah. When will it stop? And helicopters filming it all. Gosh, the demons are having their party. <laughs> <laughs> but we have no taste for these things. Because we've chanted Hare Krishna. And we've tasted Krishna Prasadam. Mm. Ah, what is better than that? Right? <laughs> to hell with Grand Prix. We want Gopunim. Uh. And so... We will continue, uh, we will continue. We will continue to chant the holy name. Uh, and not only are we chanting the holy name for ourselves. Oh no, that's not the all in all. Because there is one important point made that I cannot miss in this lecture. Uh, uh, first, I will use my own example, which is, uh, it's, it's, it's an illustrative story of the philosophical point that is made in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Imagine that when you begin spiritual life and you come into this mo movement, you get a little cup, tiny little cup. This cup you're getting and they tell you it's for the nectar. So, oh, nice. So, you know, you hold it out and you get some drops, but not very much, two, three times, still not enough. But over time, as you engage in devotional service, this cup is growing a little bit. But then one day, when you start using your cup to give the nectar to others, it starts to grow much faster. And then it grows big, and before you know it, you drink lots and you give out lots. And this is the process. So actually, it, it is said in Jaitanya Charitamrita that when, when the Panchatattva broke the lock of the storehouse of love of God, they drank it, plundered it, and they drank it to their full satisfaction. And it is said, and the stock of this storehouse was never depleted, never. He said, the more you distribute, you find the more there is. This is the secret. The more you distribute the holy name, and you give everything away, if you give away all the mercy that you received, then you find 
that you have more than before. That is why on this day of Gorpurnim, we must go on Harinam. We must. No excuses. Even I wasn't feeling well this morning. And I was thinking, should I go, should I go? But now I'm thinking, I must. <laughs> uh, I will go. I uh, hope you will also go. Because by distributing this holy name, we will wind up with more than we had before. And then we share that also. And then still more, and still more. And before we know it, we are jumping up and down, uncontrolled, in ecstasy. Uh, how nice is this Krishna consciousness that was brought to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How nice. What a nice thing. So any questions, any comments? Maharaj? Yes. Maharaj, uh, I have a question about uh, the concept of Dharma and Dharma. Like, uh, you know, a lot of Sri Krishna is a perfect epitome of, you know, Dharma and Dharma. But why did he bring the battle of Kurukshetra? Why did he, uh, you know, use his powers? And then Arjuna was fighting with Jayadatta. Why did he use his powers? Is, is that not, you know, how you reconcile Dharma and Dharma? Dharma, Dharma. Okay. Lord Ramachandra came into the... The question is about Dharma. And then uh, Krishna, of course, must be the perfect example of Dharma and Adharma. But there is a little doubt about Krishna's conduct in Kurukshetra and so on. And there are other doubts raised by other people about his behavior in Vrindavan and so on with the gopis. Um, so what about Dharma? Lord Ramachandra appeared in this world to establish the principles of Dharma so that the common man could follow his example. And therefore you see that throughout Lord, Ch Lord Ramachandra follows Dharma. Even, even to the point that he gives up Sita. Right? Because some, some cheap man is complaining. And he just gives up Sita. This Dharma is too much. How can he give up Sita? After everything, after the whole battle of Lanka, he gives up Sita. <sighs> this Dharma, all devouring Dharma. <laughs> Gosh, it's too much. This is the, this is the tragedy of the Rama, Ramayana. It's just too much. But he's, Lord Ramachandra consistently follows the path of Dharma, never deviates. He smiles when Kaikei has him banned to the forest. He takes it smiling. Dharma, 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 Dharma. Not a moment of anger. We would be angry. Hey, Kaike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just Dharma. So Lord Ramachandra gives the perfect example. Krishna doesn't come for that purpose alone. Krishna, he also comes to show us the eternal pastimes of the spiritual world here on earth. Yes, he comes to give us a, he gives us a little insight in the eternal activities of the spiritual world. Lord, Lord Ramachandra shows us how to act on earth. Then when Krishna, and that is what he shows in Vrindavan. He shows the eternal spiritual world. Then he leaves, first Mathura, Dwarka, and there he shows the principles of religion. Huh? He shows. Paritranaya sadhanam vinasya satuskrim. To establish the principles of religion and annihilate irreligion and so on. So, uh, Krishna does both. Krishna is not only following Dharma. So Krishna shows that ultimately, higher even than Dharma, is the love that exists between Krishna and his devotee. That's why in Kurukshetra, when Bhishma Dev was about to kill Arjuna, and Krishna had promised not to fight, suddenly he took up the wheel. He broke his vow. Ah, Dharma. Mm, just see. Uh, therefore, it, uh, yeah, Krishna shows that the love for his devotee is even greater than Dharma. That's even greater than Dharma. The loving relationship that exists between the devotee and Krishna. And it's that very secret that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach. 
that very secret. Mm. Are we finished? For a moment. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Gopunima Maha Mahotsava ki jai, Nitai Gaurapemanai.